Hi, I'm Annika Johnson from Al Johnson's in Sister Bay. I hope you enjoy my new video series called Door County Girl. These are stories of my life, the people and places that I love, and of course, how we all survive here in Northern Wisconsin. You can come back as often as you like, but don't forget to subscribe to Al's YouTube channel. I'll be posting lots of really cool new videos. So let's go. Welcome to another episode of Door County Girl. Today I'm at Renard's and I can't say it's in Sturgeon Bay really and I can't say it's somewhere else. It's, it's in between Sturgeon Bay and I always say it's by Southern Door High School. You can't miss it. It's the big mouse out front, which the mouse is right there, but the mouse isn't out front anymore because they've kind of grown. So, and the other um, thing is too, I had to ask, is it the Renard's here where I used to deliver, because I used to be the delivery person for Al Johnson's, or is it the one on the way to Al Goma? So I'm gonna let you do all the introductions of yourself and explain to everyone all about how Renard's kind of started and how you grew, and because I ask questions in the middle, I like that, because I like to hear the history. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, I'm Ann Renard. I'm one of the owners, uh, current owners of Renard's Cheese. Um, Renard's Cheese was actually started by my my husband's grandfather back in 1971 or 1961. I'm sorry. Um, and he and his wife Angela um, started actually Rosewood Dairy Inc., which is our manufacturing facility over in Algoma. Okay. And then in 1975, Gary. Is that the one place that's still there, or was it a different place? No, it's the original place is still there. Right. Yeah, I drive yeah. by that yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. So the factory was built in 19 in the 1920s. Okay. So we're still in that facility, although we've added on a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, now, is that facility open to purchase cheese as well? It is. We have a there is a retail store there now as well. Um, which was built in about 1975. Okay, so all you history people who want to see the original one, it's on the way to El Goma, and this one is a little bit older over there, but this is the newer one, so let's get that straight. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So the, the first retail store for Renard's Cheese was actually the building behind us. Mm -hmm. um, I remember. In 1975, um, Gary and Bonnie, which would be Chris's parents, um, had their own cheese factory and they came up with the great idea of trying retail um, So that was definitely you know, they were the founders of the retail side of Renard's cheese um, Which was great for them as a company. It got their name out there um, And the story goes on from there um, 1996 Chris, which is my husband came back to the business um, He is our master cheese maker and really is the brains behind the operation on the manufacturing side. I'm going to jump in. Did Chris have to go to school for that, or did he just learn from the family and being in the family? Did he have to go somewhere to be a master cheese maker, or did he just become one by working in the family? Good question. Um, he did have to uh, t go to, first you have to make cheese for 10 years. Okay. So he was a 10 years? 10 years. Wow. And in the state of Wisconsin, you have to be a licensed cheese maker. Um, so first, you know, obviously he had the skills for cheese making because he did grow up in the family business and mm -hmm. he did it for years. Um, he went away to school. He was um, a, actually a buyer for Super Value Foods. And then when it was time for his dad to retire, um, he decided to come back. So he continued um, that tradition. He was a became a licensed cheese maker, um, made cheese for greater than 10 years. And in 2014, um, he went on to get his master cheesemaker's license, which is in the state of Wisconsin, you have to do two, two years of classes. And then you have a 40 hour exam. Wow. Yeah. And then you on can't just eat cheese to be a <laughs> master of cheese. You have to go to school. You cannot just eat cheese. I know you can't just know cheese. True. That's there, crazy. There is an element of that um, where they still grade him on his cheese making so every year he has to send in samples and they have to um, pass a certain standard in order for him to remain a master cheese maker. Who decides that? Who, who does he have to go to to decide that oh you can still be a master cheese maker? Who is that person? Who is that? Um, so the who? Center of Dairy Research down okay. in, in Madison yep. um, really heads up that program and they partner with um, Cheese Makers Association and the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. Okay. So it's a collaboration. Um, it's a great program. We're so lucky in the state of Wisconsin. Yes, to have that. my friend Mindy went through that program. She loved it. 
She wanted to be a cheese maker, goat mm -hmm. cheese and things like that. Yeah, but yeah. she didn't go that way. But yeah, she told me all about it. She was at school. She loved it. Yeah. 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 And Chris has truly enjoyed it. And he's mentoring his own cheesemakers now. We have an apprenticeship program for assistant cheesemakers. And now we also have an apprenticeship program for cheesemakers. That's great. Yeah. Now, do your kids get involved? Um, our kids have been involved. Um, we have four. Okay. Oldest being 24. Um, she started at the age of seven. Um, helping bread cheese curds by hand and cutting cheese in the factory. Um, and then our second oldest is 19, same for her. Um, and our third and fourth daughter, same, same philosophy. They all started in the factory. They then went to um, our packaging department and cut and wrap. Um, Did they like it? You know what? They loved every part. Yeah. They pretended sometimes they didn't. Yeah, right? they gripe but, a little, but yeah, they can't yeah. wait to go to work. Yeah. They're proud of themselves. Yeah. 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 First, fast forward 20 years later, they're very <laughs> thankful for yeah. everything they learned. Um, but they have to grumble a little bit. Okay. And then they, they went into the retail side when they were old enough to mm -hmm. count money and, you know, customer service experience. Mm -hmm. They do farm markets. and. Um, today, our oldest daughter just came back to the business oh, um, wow. this past year, so she'll her. be our fourth generation. Yeah, because they can always come back. It's okay if they go float around yeah. out there. We have that battle sometimes at Al's, you know, when I don't have any children, um, but Lars has two sons. Do they want to run the business? You know, we're getting older. Do, does Rolf's son ever want to run the business? Like, what's going to happen to the business? I always get worried because my mom and dad had us three, but we're not going to live forever either. So we don't really know what's going to happen down the line. So I really think it's cool when family members want to be part of it because it's a legacy. So coming here is a legacy. Every time I drive by, anytime anyone drives by or is going home from Door County, they always say, well, we're at, we have to stop at Renard's on our way out to load up on the cheese and cheese curds. So it is a legacy. And, you know, for me coming into the business, I came back in 2010. Um, I used to travel a lot for work and I had a lot of experience with training and hiring salespeople in the insurance industry and I enjoyed that but it, it brought me away from my family a great deal mm -hmm. um, of time. So when I came back that was the element that I could offer to the business and truly make it a, a family business and that is something I always remember is those customers coming through the door with pictures with Melvin of their kids. Well, that's his name? Melvin. 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 Yes, Melvin. From age 1 through 18. And they just wanted to show us, and they're on um, their way up, you know, to Northern Door. And That's awesome. I yeah, love that. It's a family tradition, and you're right. Yeah, um, it's like a doctor birthing babies. You, know, <laughs> exactly. you watch them, like, get the pictures of, yeah. I'm, I birthed this baby, and I have this mouse, Melvin. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, so we're ecstatic to have the fourth generation back, you know, and um, they all need to go out and do their own. She was a nurse, mm -hmm. um, and enjoyed what she did, mm -hmm. um, but saw an opportunity here and, and we welcomed it. Um, but it needed to be her decision. Right. So we'll see what daughter two, three, and four do. In the oh, meantime, yeah. they're working. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, I didn't mean to jump in. So then your husband came in and did your daughters work here, so we'll go there from there. Yeah, so um, in 2010, um, I came back to the family business um, to be closer to home. And we decided that um, we wanted to make sure our business was sustainable and it was going to continue on. There was such a great, you know, great foundation of where the Reynolds started and, and their creations and, and what they were known for. Um, so we decided in 2012 to build this, build this new retail location. Um, selling cheese is much easier than selling insurance. <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> it's a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah. So you don't um, have to convince me to buy cheese. No way. Yeah. Yeah. So between Chris and his passion, obviously, to continue the family business, and my sales experience and um, management history, um, we grew from there. Mm -hmm. And so by 2012, we had outgrown our retail um, location next store, and which was also a cut and wrap, and we built this new location. Um, in 2014, um, some other family members, it was time for them to retire. Um, so we purchased the second retail location on County S um, in Algoma. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the other half of the factory. Okay. And um, we added on to this location as well in 2014. Yep, yep. Yep, yep, because we, uh, we grew, outgrew that. And we're in the process now of another um, pretty significant expansion. Uh, we are putting in an exact weight cut and wrap um, 
doing a little bit more with um, handling of our water from our Well, our where waste. would the cut and wrap be? We have one current cut and wrap in our old retail location. Okay. And we run two shifts, okay. so we can't do any more there. So our second cut and wrap is going to be at our County S location okay. in part of our warehouse. Okay. So we're starting that here in the next month. Mm -hmm. And then um, by the ne ne end of next year, we'll be um, building a new manufacturing facility um, because the one we're in is from 1920. Is it just getting old and just not modern? You need more modern things. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know how that goes. It, yeah. It's old. It's, it's tough. We're on, close to the um, center of the road. So for snow removal, for employee yeah. parking. To keep it for a museum. Yeah. A cheese Who museum. Who knows? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lots of ideas floating around. We I'm sure there is. Yeah. Haven't decided yeah. quite yet. I just uh, I was at the distillery and um, Door County uh, Winery, and they gave me a tour as well. So, where you manufacture all your cheeses at the two other places, you don't do any here. Correct. So we manufacture only at our County S. Um, Rosewood Dairy is what okay. we call our manufacturing yeah. facility. So in about mm, 2,000 square feet, okay, we have four vats, 10,000 pound vats, which make about 1,000 pounds of cheese per vat. Um, we manufacture just shy of 3 million pounds a year. Oh my gosh. And um, because the cheese is so good and our, our cheese makers do such an excellent job, um, hmm. last year we turned it down about 6 million pounds worth of manufacturing. And this year, so far, we've turned down about four. Wow. So that is definitely upgrades in, in what our f workforce expects today, yeah. um, assisting our cheesemakers in very manual physical work in yes. cheesemaking. Oh, my gosh. So they're lifting 100-pound buckets, one arm at a time, to fill our cheese wheels. Um, and that's very physical. And when you're doing that all day, bent over vats, mm -hmm. That's not today's workforce. Right. Um, number one. Number two, we have these guys with great experience and gals with great experience, and their bodies just can't handle it anymore. Right. Um, so we, our new facility will be able to assist them, so it's not so physically intense. We're still going to do open bats um, because that is who we are. We're artisan. We're small batch. We mm -hmm. will stay small batch. We're just going to make a lot more small batch. So. An artisan cheese maker has to always stay small, right? Is that how that goes? Because I know that Sargento is so big and yeah. Satori is so big. They still put out good cheese, but they're so big. Yeah. They are like big, huge companies. You like to stay small and manageable. Is that why? Or Yeah, well, there, there's room for all of us. And I think, um, you know, we really, we've looked at maybe partnering with other facilities. And we really want to stay true to our roots. Right. Um, the challenge with that is um, price points to maintain your overhead, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we can stay true to our roots and still be an artisan, but maybe make 12 million pounds of cheese a year, it sounds like a lot, but in the cheese world, it's not. It's peanuts. Right. Um, so we have about 125 different varieties, mm -hmm. um, and we're actually going to bring on some more varieties that'll be really unique and true to Door County and, and what Door County and our natural surroundings and beauty is all about. Well, I walked around a little bit before um, we met, and I have a basket, of course, of things <laughs> over here that I'm getting, but I mean, it took me for a while to get a cheese. Like, I mean, there's so many choices of cheese. I could walk home with like 20 of them because I do like cheese but I mean then I'm one person and how long can I eat my cheese you know <laughs> so I like to get cheese and share with everybody at work but I just it's so hard to pick out one do you have a favorite my favorite is our two-year white two-year white I bought a nine-year white yeah. I like that like the sharper the better for me I just love when, it, when you cut it and it crumbles because it's like super like sharp it's excellent and yeah. the older the sharper um, the little crystallization. Didn't you have like a 14 year in there? We do. I think the oldest we have right now, I believe, is 15 years. I saw that. I didn't get that because I wasn't sure. But I mean, I'm not that it's not going to be good, but I was got sort of something in the middle. I'm used to like two year and thinking that's good. So I can't wait to try the nine year. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to let us know what you think. Yeah, I, well, I'll love it. I know I will. Uh, so I'm going to, when you get, where do you get all your milk from that you use for making cheese? 
Um, great question, and again, part of the reason we'd like to increase our capacity. So currently we have just shy of 20 small family farms here in Door County, and we have two in Kiwani County. Um, and as the business community, or I'm sorry, milking community gets bigger, it's harder for those farms to find factories that want to pick them up mm -hmm. um, because they're looking for tankers full. Mm -hmm. um, so we have our small family farms. We pick up milk from every day. Um, and we have 16 on a waiting list. Okay, so when you go to someone's small family farm to pick up milk, mm -hmm. how do you pick it up? Do you have like a big tanker and you put it all in there? Or do you just get like milk cans of it? Or how, do, how does that work? <laughs> Thank goodness the milk can, can days are over. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, there would be so many milk cans. Yeah, yeah that there you, would be. Yeah. There would be. So it is a tanker, a um, tanker. that picks it up. Um, 50,000 gallons they can pick up um, in a tanker, okay. our size, which is a smaller milk truck. So you actually. have to have a person that actually works that job going there to pick up daily mm -hmm. milk. Yeah, and again, it's a local um, gentleman who owns his own milk route. Okay. Um, and we partner with him and he picks up from our farms. Well, and that's he, a win-win situation. Yeah, yeah I like that. Okay, so you got your milk from them. Now, do you do mostly, um, do people are all now gluten-free and um, low salt and uh, uh, lactose intolerant, and there's so much stuff out there now that it used to be there. How do you keep up with all of that and still not worry about, because I don't have a problem with any of that myself physically, because I because I can just eat that. Sure. But what about other people? Do you ever ask if they have, you have lactose free cheese, is there such a thing, or, you know? Believe it or not, there is. Um, lactose, the amount of lactose in an aged cheddar is a little bit less. Oh, okay. Um, so some people can tolerate an aged cheddar. Um, Swiss lace is lactose free, so we definitely will let them know that. Um, as far as our manufacturing, we really are not necessarily targeting that. Right, um, cheese is cheese. Because it's such a small percentage of the population. Yeah. Don't want, eat it if you don't <laughs> like it. Don't you just get something I feel else. bad for them because yeah. they can't enjoy I, that. Me too. You know? I, like, I love cheese. I can't <laughs> even imagine. Just think of all the things we put cheese on. No matter what it is, you're like shredding cheese on this and putting cheese on a cracker and putting cheese on your pasta. And che it's just everywhere. In, in our diet, it is. Yeah. And, you know, the beauty of gluten-free is it is naturally gluten-free. Oh. Um, some cheese, uh, there's beer in, like our Wisconsin beer cheddar, so that wouldn't be gluten-free. So the gluten-free, we don't have to worry about that's as That's perfect. Much. Yeah, that's great. Um, low sodium. Have you ever ch t uh, tasted cheese curds without sodium? Probably tastes like really bland, low sodium cottage cheese, because that doesn't taste good to me at all. Correct, so we don't do a lot of it. Um, again, we have a handful that are lower sodium. Um, and when people come in, we just help them out with those selections. Yeah, so when people come in, do you have a person on the floor that just they don't know what to get and they just want you to pick out a couple for you? Do you have like a little concierge person that can lead them in the right direction? <laughs> we do, our master cheese maker does Cheese 101. Um, with all of our sales associates. Okay. So we make sure that they stay up, you know, and they have somebody to go to with the questions. And then from there, they're prepared to answer those questions. We have a sample table. You guys are organized. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So we like people to be able to try different things mm -hmm. that maybe they wouldn't try. If, yes. Because they, they just... might be pleasantly surprised yeah. that I don't like blue cheese. I think you need to try this one. You might really love it. Just. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid to try new things because you can always still hate it or you might experience something that you're like, I had no idea that I liked this. Yeah, so that's yeah. pretty cool. It's amazing what goes um, goes great in cheese. We just finished up a new recipe. I shouldn't say we. I was part of the idea, um, but I can't take credit for the, the make of it. Our um, cheesemakers just came up with a guacamole farmers. Oh, yum. It's excellent. Do you still excellent, have it in excellent. there? We don't have it out yet. Oh, um, it's not out yet. Don't yeah. ask for them. Don't call them up and ask them for it. Our first they version will, came out blue. I'm going to get that guacamole cheese. <laughs> I don't see it in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our first version came out blue, so we had to go back to the drawing board. And um, it's now a beautiful white, creamy. Oh, that um, sounds so good. Excellent flavor. Oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah. I'm gonna, We're I'm looking gonna, forward to it. You'll have to tell me when it's here. Um, that's the secret when she tells us when it's here. We always have a secret. Everybody's like, what's the secret? Um, what about, I love, you know, you, when COVID happened, everybody all of a sudden, we, I joke about this all the time, 
all of a sudden, everybody wants to sit outside in Door County because the weather's so nice. Hasn't it always been? <laughs> Nobody ever wanted to sit outside before, but when COVID happened, everybody has outdoor seating now, whether you're sitting in a parking lot or you're sitting on a rooftop <laughs> or like in, in someone's, I don't know, backyard that's like this big, there's an outdoor seating area. But you have a beautiful outdoor seating area out here. You can have like a little picnic out here and you sell other things in here. You just don't sell cheese. You sell like meat products. You can have like a little charcuterie out here by yourself with a bottle of wine because you mm -hmm. sell liquor and a lot of the local products from all over. It's totally a farm market with your cheese, which is a bonus. Because I just found a big basket of things that everybody <laughs> would like that's not just yours, but other things that I'm like, oh, I'm never going to get there, so I'm going to grab it here. I'm never going to get there, so I'm going to grab it here. So, But talk a little bit about this outdoor, and you have a place for the kids to play mm -hmm. so their parents can finish their meal for once, right. you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so talk about that. Um, so you're right. COVID definitely um, brought more of people wanting to be outdoors. But, you know, I think sometimes we take grant for granted being outdoors because of our natural beauty. We just take it for granted. Right. But people driving in maybe don't have that, so they don't notice it. Mm -hmm. um, so COVID definitely drew that demand. So we have our outdoor dining area. We did have it before. We just expanded it. And then we added some um, picnic tables in our, in our grass area. Um, we're dog friendly. A lot of people travel with their dogs. I personally have four, so I get Yeah, it. my dog's in the car over there, and I keep getting her to go, to go to the bathroom. She doesn't want to go. But then I'm like, they have a poop station. It's okay over we there. Do. I can go scoop it up if you go. She's like so fussy where she wants to go. Yeah. She probably yeah. wants to go in the cornfield. Yeah, so we, we are, you know, definitely have that that accommodation and then also we are blessed to have a lot of food businesses up here in Door County mm -hmm. and they're good at what they do mm -hmm. and the majority do small batch and so it's really easy for us to partner with them and, yeah. and you know showcase their products as well we're kind of that last stop or first stop depending on which way you're heading in Door County mm -hmm. so if maybe somebody didn't get to um, one of the wineries while they were here well they get to stop here and yes and exactly pick it up on their way out. yeah you can get almost anything you want here if you're if you just had too much fun on your vacation you were always sailing or at the beach and now you're going, oh my god I didn't grandma anything or aunt and uncle or like the dog sitter Stop here and get load up. And you guys have gift baskets during Christmas. You guys are so busy. Because I've are. come here where those girls <laughs> in the back are like, oh my God, it's crazy. I have all kinds of gift baskets and things going out all over. Shipping out to everywhere because everybody knows about you. It's crazy, isn't it? Christmas? We do, and we love it. Yeah. Um, we have a, a really unique team here. Um, the culture is fun, um, which makes those long days go very quickly. Yeah, they're funny back there. I <laughs> yeah. love those ladies. We're done. We just got done with 16 hours, lady. That's okay. Let's go for another seven. Awesome. So that's our Christmas season. Um, you know, we bring in semis to keep our gift boxes ready for UPS and FedEx to ship out. Um, yeah, you have them running yeah. out here that are chilled. That's what that's for. Yes, I always saw that. I'm like, why is a semi park <laughs> yeah. out here? They're full of all these cheese and yes. keeping it cool for, yeah, yes. that's, and get it out of your way while you're making more. Right, yeah, so we definitely are known for that. And we actually do that year round. Um, we do our gift boxes year round. Um, we'll make them for people when they come in. They can create their own. Um, we ship them for companies year round. And of course, Christmas is the biggest time. So at Christmas time, we usually are doing anywhere between 15 and 20,000 gift boxes in about a six week period, which Who is Who doesn't want a gift basket <laughs> full of cheese products? I mean, that's a no brainer, especially during Christmas, because yeah. then you have to have people over and then you have this nice selection of cheese to give to your friends. And they're like, oh, Door County, we go there all the time. We go to Renard's, you have Renard's cheese. So I like that whole thing. So with the gift baskets, um, you sometimes have flyers. Do you have ones that are already made up or do you have someone that says, I want this, 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 and this? I mean, how do you guys do that? Do you have to do phone calls or online or how do you do that? We do it any way the customer would like, Perfect. pretty much. So every, we do have our, we call them our pre-made selections to give them the ideas. Um, so if they choose one of those, you know, this time of year, we make it up to sure. order. Um, Christmas, we try to have... Because a grab-and-go is good. You just have it's already made. It is. But if somebody was a Bloody Mary drinker, they, you have your Bloody Mary mix and your Bloody Mary cheeses and you know, like the things that go with Bloody Marys, that would be an awesome basket or brandy old-fashioned. Oh. 
you know, you have all those kind of good things that go with it. So and don't be afraid, you know, all you bigger corporate uh, places that need to get some gifts for your employees, even if you're small, I'm sure they would work with you because you can always get a hat or a jacket, but getting a nice basket of delicious cheese that's artisan and handmade and everybody loves it. It's always here and it's always a great gift. So I like that. That's, that's pretty cool. I'm going to jump to a different subject. Now, did you have a daughter that had cancer? I did. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I remember the first time I read about it, which I didn't even understand why I had never even heard of it. And I was at the Bay Lake Bank and I had oh, to wait. Wow. I know. I had to wait for something. So I sat down in the Bay Lake Bank, the old building in Sister Bay, and there was a little flyer mm -hmm. sitting next to the table. And it, you were having a uh, fundraiser for door cancer. Oh, yes. And then it told the whole story of your daughter. Mm -hmm. And then you had a, spe a cheese that was going to raise money. So if you bought that cheese, it would go to door cancer. So, And I've been to a couple door cancer um, parties, the big party mm -hmm. fundraiser, mm -hmm. where you guys donate a lot to door cancer. So you do a lot of philanthropy work as well as just making cheese. Of course, yes. And, and that, um, you know, we always did things with schools, you mm -hmm. know, and fundraisers and such. And, and Taylor, she'd be daughter number three at the age of two, was diagnosed with cancer. Um, actually dealt with a lot of that until she was uh, 16 or 14 I'm sorry yeah um, so 12 years we were going through that and did you go to Green Bay or did you go to Children's in Milwaukee um, actually she was diagnosed at Bellin in Green Bay oh, okay um, and flight for life to Children's and then because of the rare form of the cancer we actually did all of our treatments in New York oh wow so and did you go to Sloan Kettering yes yeah. wow. yep. Sloan well you know my son's bow <laughs> So he oh, had yes. cancer, so. and he died of cancer when he was 13. So the reason I was reading that thing, I'm like, how could I have not known all this that was going on back then? But nobody ever pu yeah. said much up north. You know, I don't yeah. hear a lot about that. But reading about it just sitting there, it was like, whoa, I did not know about this. And I deliver here all the time. I had just not heard about it. So, yeah, that's... Yeah, we just kind of did what we needed to do. And, you know, we had, I would think I was pregnant with my fourth daughter at that time. And you just do what you have to do, and you get through. And um, you know, family. We're very big family people, um, so family was support. You know, the focus was obviously on all our kids. Mm -hmm. One in the oven was okay, mm -hmm. but <laughs> the other three. It's hard. That's yeah. where the focus went. Um, and Door Can would just like every now and again show up and do something like just really cool, or send us a card with gas cards. Hey, we heard it is going so weird here. when the community starts to give because yeah. you're not used to that, and yeah. then after a while you get a moment to reflect yeah. on all of those little things, people that helped you, but you didn't have time to focus on it then. So my whole story is, I bet you had time to think about it, going, "Wow, I want to do something to say thank you." Correct. And, and you know, um, we are fortunate that and we had good insurance and, um, you know, it, it's expensive. Yes, it is. same. Um, but when I go through tough times and my husband goes through tough times, we just work harder. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you know, we, we didn't necessarily need financial support, but those, even the people that don't need financial support, that every, hey, I'm thinking about you, yeah. um, is it goes a long way. Like you're not forgotten. No, people. you're not forgotten. And, and now this was a way that we could give back yeah. to those people that do need financial yes. support or for those volunteers to still be inspired to just write that card, mm -hmm. you know, even if it's not financial support. So it's a great organization. Yeah. Um, it really is. So what do you do for them? You pick a cheese. So we had picked um, our two-year white cheddar and for every pound of two-year white cheddar um, that we sold, we donated 50 cents back to Dorcan. Do you still do it or do you just do it every now and then? You know, now that you say that, when the gala went away during COVID, right. that went away. Yes. Um, so we're kind of getting our feet back under us. Um, Dorcan, there's a ton of support for Dorcan. Yeah. Um, and we always wish them well. And, you know, we, we do the table typically. Mm -hmm. This year we did not. Yeah. Um, so We did a table, but it's so hard for anyone to go sometimes because we're all working. <laughs> yes. We all want to go, yes. but we don't have anyone to take our place. So. Yeah, and we have 75 people. We used to bring the whole company 
okay, well now we have 75 people mm -hmm. and sometimes we have 100, yeah. you know, depending on the season. So that was another thing too. We're trying to figure out where that all fits in. Exactly. Um, and there's a couple other organizations that um, we do things for um, and things that we want to get involved in in our community here in Southern Door. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're really regrouping on that right now. But Door Can will always be near and dear to our I heart and we will always support it. I know. I remember reading about that and I thought mm -hmm. that was so cool that you guys did that. It's a big way to do it, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. people buy cheese and, and I mean, we did a cookie sale and it grew and grew and grew and got so big that um, we had it every fall fest and so like this it wasn't really a cookie it wasn't about the cookie so much <laughs> it was like what does the cookie do right like what does the cheese do so yeah. I mean everybody likes cheese but everybody should know the story about why you do the cheese yeah. like for that yeah so. absolutely and I think you know I think when when Taylor um, got done with her last surgery because from the cancer um, you know we traveled life was very different for a long time didn't even realize it. You just yeah. do what you have to do. And then after the cancer in third grade, she developed scoliosis from where the tumor was removed. So then we ended up having to travel to Missouri oh, wow. for that. And that went on um, for a period of time. She was in traction then for about a month and had surgery. And then from there, she did um, annual surgeries until she was 14. So I think, you know, when COVID hit, um, and I think her last follow-up was about that time, um, about the time she was 16. And it was the last follow-up. Wow. And it was something that we're free. Does that and make sense? And how old is she today? She is 17. So she's doing well? 17 going on like 50. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, when yeah. I was living on yeah. the cancer floor, there were like four-year-olds telling the nurse she was doing it wrong and they can just <laughs> let me do it. They can access their own ports and put their yes. own meds in and whatever. Yeah, yeah. They're all little adults. Yeah. So she's 17. She's a senior. Um, wise beyond her years as are her sisters. Yeah. Um, it just puts you in a different place in yeah. your life. Yeah. Um, and such, so many great things came out of it. I'm not going to tell you I wish it on anyone. No. <laughs> but it changes you in it a weird way. Yeah. It does. Um, yeah. So it's what you do with it. And um, she is, you know, spreading her wings. She's going to fly just like the other girls have. And her hope is to go away to um, law school next year. Oh, awesome. And she can sell ice to an Eskimo. So she will do very, very well. She's a very talented writer. Um, she's very uh, good with people. That's great. And she has her sisters who surround her and love her and help her with her sense of humor um, to support her. So oh, she'll do great things. I love that. Go Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to change the subject because I love that subject and we could go on and on because I have so many questions. But I was just waiting around for my friends to show up and I found these ice cream facts. And do you sell ice cream in here? We do. We sell chocolate chop. And are you familiar with Chocolate Shop? It's like the best ice cream in Wisconsin. Okay. From Madison. Well, I love this because there's um, little facts and I love facts. So I remember we went on a cruise ship once and they were saying, how many eggs do they use a day? And how many um, pineapples do they go through? Or <laughs> just, I don't know why I like that. It's just how many meatballs do you serve at Al Johnson's a day? I mean, how much milk does it take to put in your pancake batter? But um, I'm just gonna read a couple ice cream facts because I think it's cool. In 2021, Wisconsin bought 75.4 million pounds of ice cream and sherbet. That is nearly 2.6 gallons per person in Wisconsin. That's crazy. I'm above average then. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so Wisconsin is home to 40 plus licensed cream plants. In Wisconsin, ice cream sales are 16% higher than average in July. Because everybody's hot and bothered in July and ice cream is always best when you're hot. It takes 12 pounds of or 1.4 gallons of milk to make one gallon of ice cream. 7.5% of milk produced the US, in the US is made into ice cream. So most of the milk is made into ice cream and not cheese. Is that right? Or only 7.5%. Okay, so the That's rest okay. is probably That's a good cheesy. Amount. Yeah. It's gotta be cheese. Yeah, it's gotta be cheese. So the USDA mandates that ice cream must contain at least 10% milk fat to be called ice cream. And the last one that I really thought was cool, because I learned that the hamburger was made in Seymour, Wisconsin when I was driving by and there was a big sign there. Um, July is National Ice Cream Month. The third Sunday of July is National Ice Cream Day. 
The ice cream sundae was invented in Two Rivers, Wisconsin in 1881, and it was only sold on Sundays, and it only cost a nickel. Wow. That's crazy. I know this has nothing to do with days. you, but I mean, it's a milk product and I'm talking about ice cream. We could be talking about cheese, but in much more massive numbers. So, and then I'm going to take this home because I'm going to make the salty vanilla no churn mascarpone ice cream. And you don't even need an ice cream maker to make it. It sounds so. I'm going to try it. <laughs> okay, so tell me a little bit about the Melt Bistro. Okay, so when COVID hit, we needed a project. So we thought, you know, what, what a better time, no better time than now um, to inspire our chefs and for our chefs to inspire their teams and let's recreate our menu. Mm -hmm. And Melt Bistro was born. Um, when we moved into this, loca this new retail location in 2012, we put in a little deli and we just called it deli. I've been there many times, <laughs> yep. And the, we didn't know if it would take off or not, so we kept it simple. Um, and it did surprisingly well. Oh yeah. So we took it up a notch um, in 2020 and our um, chef Heidi and her sidekick Alexis and her team did some excellent, excellent creations. And um, we launched it then and it's been going strong ever since. We've recent, we, we have our grab and go items as well, which mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. they do. Um, we've always done well with our pizzas and um, we actually have a fundraiser out where we give 50% back to a lot of our group, to our fundraising groups who sell our pizzas. Um, so it's just kind of evolved. And now um, actually they're catering as well. Oh, um, so. Wow. It's a nice little place, you know, people can come in and, and try our cheese and recipes. Mm -hmm. um, they can go home and take those ideas with them and make it themselves. Yeah, you have some great grilled cheeses on the menu. I think I've yes. had a couple different kinds. What are, your, uh, what are some of the items on the menu? Can you mention that to them? I've seen your yeah, menu, yeah. but what are your, some of your big favorites? My favorite is a honey truffle melt. It's a honey truffle melt. melt. Yum! Mouth. Yeah. Um, we, of course, have our classic uh, uh, grilled cheese, okay. um, which is, has it's like a crusted cheese on the outside of the bread. Mm -hmm. And then it has a delicious um, mustard in it as well. Um, we have our Cuban, our Italian. Um, we have mom's mac and cheese. We have our loaded mac and cheese, um, cheese curd salad, panzanella salad for those that like something a little healthier. Oh wow, what is that? Yeah. What is a cheese curd salad? Everybody loves cheese curds. Yeah, so it's um, fresh greens and um, roasted tomatoes and a couple of other vegetable fixings. Wow, with, it sounds um, delicious with the cheese curds. Yeah, cheese curds and homemade croutons. Oh yum. I know, and it's finished off with a vinaigrette. So it's if you excellent. want to be healthy, you have to have that, but it still has cheese curds, so yeah, I like that. Yeah. So what is, uh, what is the most popular item on your menu? Like what is the most thing that people order on that menu? Um, that I would say is our Italian and our Cuban. Because there's a little bit of meat and a little bit of cheese. Yeah, A little definitely. bit of everything. Definitely. Yeah. And our mac and cheese, our mom's mac does exceptionally well. So between those three. Okay, yeah, mac and cheese, you can't beat mac and cheese. You can't, I know. comfort food, I know. what better. Well, you know, every time I came here for a delivery, I would always get myself a sandwich while I, I would go in and order it, and then I would go unload the truck, and then um, I'd always bring the girls a tin of cookies in there for their fika time, because they have to have a little coffee and cookies later, and chat with them a little, and then I would wait for my sandwich, and I would just eat it on the way to my next place. And I think I had back then, though, it was been a, been a bit, um, it was like a panini with uh, pesto and yes. it had some really delicious, uh, yes. it was really good. Yeah. But I'll have to try some new things on your menu. You should try the Melvin's Masterpiece. Um, it is excellent as well. It's okay. a cold sandwich, Okay. but it's excellent. Okay. Well, you know, and you can also come here, um, can you call ahead and get things to go? You certainly can. You can so like if they wanted well. to grab it and go and eat in the car, like instead of fast food, they can come here and get some delicious sandwiches to take with them. And, or eat out here and by the picnic area. Like you can, that. you can call ahead, or if you come in, we have grab and go items ready to go. So if you don't have time to call ahead or you think about it as you walk in the door, you can grab it out of our grab and go cooler. 
Oh, excellent. Well, I do know one thing about cheese curds, because I know you sell a lot of cheese curds. I, while I was you walking do. around the store picking things out that I was going to buy, I saw them come many times to load up the cheese barrel with all the fresh <laughs> cheese curds. Yes. But I, ta I always brought some home because our gift shop manager at the time, she always said, if you're going to Bernard's, you better not come back. With, or going, if you're going to Renard's, you better not come back without a bag of cheese curds. So I'd always get like a big bag of cheese curds for her. And the first time I brought them back, mm -hmm. I laid them on her desk and she left them out on the desk. Mm. So I thought she was doing, I was doing her a favor by putting them in the fridge. And she came back the next day, who put my cheese curds in the fridge? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I did, because you left them out and they needed to be refrigerated. No, 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 nobody refrigerates cheese curds. That's, you eat them room temperature. Is that true? Well, you know, ask if you ask my grandfather uh, chris's grandfather howard he'll leave cheese curds out for a week okay. and he'll leave his monster out for a week on the counter his body's accustomed to that oh yeah we make fresh cheese curds every day and whatever we don't sell we have to throw out because okay. they can't be out of refrigeration by state laws and standards today um greater than 24 hours so you did her a favor by putting it in the fridge but did you hear that sarah <laughs> <laughs> but her body might be accustomed to it. Probably, because so. I always brought her a bag and she would leave them out on the counter. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Oh my God. Okay, well, I love all cheese and I like trying new cheeses. I always try to go to a grocery store and pick out something I've never tried before. But if none of you people have never been to Renard's, which is kind of unthinkable if you've been to Door County, because <laughs> everyone I know stops here that I meet in the restaurant where I work at L. Johnson's, and they always come to Renard's. So don't forget to come in and visit Anne and uh, pick out some massive amounts of cheese and bring it home as gifts or eat it yourself and yeah so we're talking about cheese and cheese is excellent one of my favorite subjects well everybody don't forget to like and subscribe at the bottom of the page and you'll meet more really great people like Anne and the local businesses all around Door County and beyond so thanks for joining us Thank for another you. episode and we'll see you next time bye guys Thanks, you. Thank That's you. so awesome. Yeah, excellent I love job. <laughs> Thanks for watching Door County Girl. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you next time.